the new hero chip finally arrives in the land of dawn not only that a new set of new beast skins are coming too also the new collector skin is out so stay tuned till the last for more information Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video we are going to talk about all the changes that patch 1.8.54 came up with. Let's start with the latest addition to the MLBB Hero List chip. Chip is a support tank with a unique hovercraft that provides mobility and engagement tools. He enjoys snacking on a potato chips which regenerates low HP after finishing a bag. Also, I really enjoy making videos for you, but did you know only 36.6% of you have subscribed? That makes me a bit sad. We spend hours and days making each video the best for you. Your support means a lot. When you subscribe, it's like you are saying I like what you do and I'm with you. It helps us keep going and making videos. It will take 2 seconds to hit the subscribe button and join our family. He also has a special skill, Vivoke, which allows him to teleport to any other beacon, adding an incredible level of mobility. For a detailed video on his skills and mechanics, check out the tagged video from the top right corner. Let's start the video off with all the hero adjustments. Pakito, who has been making waves in professional plays but has struggled to achieve the same impact in regular ranked matches, is finally receiving a buff. Pakito's skill 2 has received a significant buff, the skill width has been greatly increased to match that of his skill 1. This change means player can now land skill 2 more easily, improving its hit rate and making it more reliable during engagements. Similarly, the width of Pakito's ultimate has been slightly increased also to align with the width of skill 1. This adjustment enhances the consistency of landing the ultimate, allowing players to connect with their targets more effectively. Iksha receives a notable buff, focusing on enhancing her mobility while maintaining her overall damage output. Iksha's skill 1 cooldown has been standardized to 4 seconds at all levels, a significant reduction from the previous 8 to 4 seconds range. This change means Iksha can use his skill 1 more frequently, increasing her mobility and agility in combat. However, there's an adjustment in the base damage. It now starts at 100 and scales up to 300, compared to the previous range of 175 to 300. This alteration ensures that while her early game damage potentially is slightly reduced, her late game damage remains intact. Edith receives a significant buff to her passive, enhancing her damage potential. Edith's passive now deals more magic damage based on her maximum HP the bonus damage has been increased from a range of 3 to 6 percent to a new range of 4 to 8 percent. This means that as Edith levels up, her capacity to deal damage, especially in prolonged fights, is significantly enhanced. The recent update has brought significant buffs to Minsitar, particularly strengthening his abilities in the EXP lane. Minsitar's skill 1 has received a boost in both its first and second damage components. The damage formula for each part has been increased from 175 to 300 plus 180 percent extra physical attack to 175 to 300 plus 200 percent extra physical attack. This increase means that Minsitar can now dish out more damage with each use of skill 1, significantly improving his dueling and skirmishes capabilities. Similarly, skill 2 has been also buffed. The damage has been raised from 300 to 500 plus 160% extra physical attack to 300 to 500 plus 180% extra physical attack. This enhancement not only boosts overall damage output but also makes him more of a threat in controlling and dominating the EXP lane. Hayabusa has been performing a bit too effectively in recent matches, so he is getting enough. Hayabusa's ultimate has seen a considerable reduction in damage. The new damage formula is now 100 to 140 plus 70% extra physical attack, a step down from the previous 130 to 150 plus 100% extra physical attack. This substantial decrease in both base damage and scaling means that Hayabusa will no longer be able to deal as much burst damage. Kere is getting enough. Her passive has been nerfed to change 
how her damage scaled. Previously, her passive dealt damage equivalent to 6% to 8% of the target's maximum HP. Now it has been adjusted to 6% plus 1% of extra physical attack of target's maximum HP. This means that while the base percentage remains the same, the additional damage now scales with her extra physical attack rather than being a flat percentage. Let's talk about the latest changes to Jawhead, a hero who has seen various tweaks in recent updates. Some of the recent changes made to Jawhead have been rolled back. This suggests that the developers are recalibrating his abilities to better align with the desired gameplay balance. Despite the rewards, one change that remains is the adjustment to Jawhead's ultimate, specifically the knockback effect. Moving on to battlefield adjustment. Scavenger Crabs has seen some adjustments. The total value of drops from Scavenger Crabs now increases over time. Performing as long the drop rates decreased time. from 3 to 2 drops. This was done to reduce the trouble of collecting the drop. But the value of each drop remains the same. Me and Yo -Yo have been performing as long the scavenger crabs will now cease to respawn after the load appears on the battlefield. Two hours later. So make sure to take full advantage of it before the load spawns. The price of the glowing one has been lowered. Oh in response to the changes in radiant armor, the final magic damage increase effect of glowing ones has been removed. This change aims to balance heroes with multi-hit magic damage abilities. Lane assignments and battle setups for some heroes have been adjusted for better lane appropriateness. And mage potion recommendations have been changed to avoid accidental selections and are now based on the player's goal relative to their equipment completion. Control effects under 0.2 seconds will no longer disable skill icons. Recommended builds for Aurora have been adjusted for better gameplay synergy. Moving to bug fixes. The developer has fixed the bug with Lonox, where her damage to the Lord wasn't counted as damage to creep. Fixed an occasional bug where Retribution couldn't deal damage to creeps in range. The filter distance for the minion targeting button to match the targeting button's maximum filter distance has now been fixed. Fix the priority inconsistency between turtle and lord encounters. Moving on to weekly free heroes. The weekly free heroes from 19th of January to the 26th of January are as follows. The extra free heroes for Starlight members are as follows. Interstellar Courier. Akai is depicted as a cute but mighty character in fancy armor with purple and gold highlights that suggest he's someone important like a king. He also magic staff and here's the immortal frog. Magical Cake Chef This a happy Akai, dressed as a chef, smiling while showing off a tasty assortment of pastries. The immortal frog is also there, enhancing the charm of the delightful scene. Party Host Akai is rocking wearing sunglasses and a vibrant jacket and holds a 8-year sign next to him. Immortal Frog is ready to party with the birthday cake. Together, they bring lively energy, inviting everyone to celebrate MLBB's 8-year milestone. Akai is dressed in an artistic figure in a colorful cloak with a large pen brush and executes creativity. Frog Immortal, his quirky sidekick in a party head, seems ready to join in some magical fun. Time Tool Guide In this survey, a guy is in advanced armor and will save futuristic staff eager for adventure alongside Frog Immortal, a charming robotic frog, completes the sci-fi duo, ready to join you on a journey through time and space. Then we have a new skin survey for Hanabi. This is the first design. In this design, Hanabi is portrayed as a powerful warrior surrounded by a mystical fox aura. Her flaming and shadowy armor showcasing her command over fire and darkness. With poised grace, she's ready to unleash her formidable abilities with a single gesture. Here, Hanabi is shown as an otherworldly warrior in aqua and flame colored armor, embodying the balance of water and fire with the essence of mythological folks. Her sharp gaze matches the grace of her twirling tails. This is the third design. 
She is portrayed as a beautiful figure which moves between the elements. Her armor, a canvas of fire and water, her hair, a vibrant streak of wind. She embodies a creative milestone, a combination of passion and serenity, an elemental power avatar shrouded in mystery. This is the fourth design. In this design, Hanabi is depicted as a stunning character, executing both grace and power. Her vibrant armor represents elements like fire, water, and wind. With unwavering confidence, she can effortlessly control natural forces, be it commanding the waves or summoning fire. Next, we have possible Neo Beast skin surveys. Brody Neo Beast Snake. Here, Brody is portrayed as a cool and rugged hero in dark armor, sporting a stylish pink tuft. His casual yard prepared stance suggests readiness for battle. With a flaming tail and energized hand, he executes unrestrained power, a blend of modern style and ancient might. Dairoth Neo Beast Cannon In the survey of Dairoth, he is portrayed as a fierce spirit with a flare of spectacular stands. His cloth fist charged with purple energy, wearing a wolf mask and a midnight and magenta coat. He appears to be more than day warrior with a touch of supernatural, ready to enter a realm of magic and moonlight. Ling Neo Beast Dragon Ling is portrayed as a knight figure that creates a dramatic silhouette, his armor reminiscent of legendary dragons, and his sword appears to have captured the energy of a brilliant sunset. He stands with nonchalant assurance as if daring the knight to test him. Farsa Neo Beast Bird here, Farsa is portrayed as a striking figure wrapped in mystery and grace, holding a scepter and a cape billowing with bright crimson spikes. A bright bird soars beside her, implying a connection with the natural world. Freya's revamped skin, War Angel. Here's the revamped skin of Freya, shows her as an angel like warrior with strong celestial vibes. She has golden wings and wears shiny armor decorated with jewels. Holding a sword and shield, she looks ready for a grand battle in the stars. Here we have the new Phobius revamped look. In the survey, revamped Phobius is depicted with large. In the survey, revamped Phobius is depicted with a large, fiery gauntlet symbolizing his great ambition. He appears a seasoned warrior, ready for battle, with a determined and challenging expression that warns of intense confrontation with any foe. Moving to other updates, get ready for an epic crossover as the AOT skin artwork is now out. This special series features Yin as Eren bringing the intense energy of the beloved AOT character to the battlefield. Martis as Levi channeling the cool and calculated spirit of the Survey Corps' strongest soldier. Fanny as Mikasa embodying the fierce and loyal essence of one of the AOT's central characters. Here's a sneak peek of Novaria's February Starlight skin, Sugar Glaze. The theme for 2024's annual party skins is revealed. Sparkle. The lineup includes Sparkle Melissa, Sparkle Fredrin, Sparkle Estes, Astral Muse, Esmeralda. Get ready to shine on the battlefield with these dazzling new skins. Catch a sneak peek of Julian's upcoming epic skin, Solomon's Legacy. Expect a skin that's both regal and powerful. Iksha's starlet skin for March is revealed as Dynamic Streak. Get ready for a skin that's as energetic and vibrant as Iksha herself. The Grand Collection is set to feature Minsita's Soul Invictus skin alongside collector skins for Nathan and Nana. These skins promise to bring a new level of grandeur to your favorite heroes. So are you excited about Minsita getting a collector skin? Share your thoughts down below. That will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.